on draft night, not only did the Bulls trade to getting the 35 pick and drafting Julian Phillips, the Chicago Bulls also signed undrafted rookie Adama Sanogo. And I'm going to tell you guys on this episode why he could be one of the steals of the draft. You are now tuned in to Chicago Bulls Central, your number one place for all Chicago Bulls news and content. All right, Bulls fans, welcome to another episode of Chicago Bulls Central, your number one spot for everything Chicago Bulls related. I'm the host here, Hayes. If you want to follow me, you can do so right off the top at CEO Hayes. That's CEO H-A-I-Z-E. If you want to follow the show, you can do so at Bull Central Pod on every social media platform. But let's get into the content. So we are here now on this evening episode to address why center Adama Sonogo could be one of the steals of this NBA draft. And I know it's Bulls. It's I don't even mean that as hyperbole. He could be a player that is absolutely looked at as still at the fact that the Bulls got him as an undrafted rookie. This is a guy who has, as a big man, albeit an undersized center at 6'9", having a 7-foot wingspan. That is, you already know that AK likes his wingspans on players, but when you look at the feel for this guy that he has in the game, if you look at these highlights, he just understands how to move and where to be with the basketball. And even off ball, he is a really good uh, pit roll man in the pick and roll on the offensive side. He can also guard bigs coming down off the of pick and roll as well. One of the, the the few negatives of his game definitely is going to be if he gets caught with a guard on a pick and roll, he may face some issues there unless he really learns how to use his length uh, correctly to kind of overcome some of that lack of lateral quickness that he has. But when you look at the fact he has a solid mid-range game, right, especially as a big man, that's what you want to see. His shot release is slow. He's going to have to really work on quickening up that shot release so he doesn't get blocked at the NBA level. But the fact of the matter is, when you look at UConn's championship run, he was one of the most consistent players out of that. And then when you pair in the fact that he took uh, went 35.8% from three-point range last season, that is definitely a strength, and especially when you look at his ability to play center. I don't think, I know some people have said, could he play power forward? I'm not necessarily looking at him playing power forward. I think a lot of his advantages are going to come from him playing center, albeit a small ball center. But at the end of the day, well coached, a smart uh, IQ basketball player on both sides of the ball, right? He knows how to get it done, averaging 1.9 blocks per game as a sophomore. And then on top of that, he just is a leaper that can get it done. He's not a huge leaper, not an athlete that's going to jump out the gym, but he understands how, when to use the size and length correctly. That's what she said, but that's a joke. At the end of the day, also, he can put the ball on the floor enough to where he can get past some of the bigger defenders. He has a nice set of post moves as well. I've seen you guys, some of you guys compare him and ask what the difference is between him and a player like Kofi Coburn. It's simply simply refinement. This guy has a refinement to his game that Kofi Coburn just did not have, and that is why he is not in the NBA. He's also a solid passer as a big man, averaging 1.3 assists per game, has a solid vision and feel for the game this is a guy that i i'm really the more i look and the more i do research on him the more i'm surprised that he went undrafted in this draft this is a guy who has talent who has a skill set yes he's undersized at his position but again we're seeing more and more smaller centers in the in the nba be able with that long wingspan to be able to find a way to stay on the court now some of the other issues he gets a little handsy, and at the NBA level, that is going to be called as a foul at the NBA level. He's going to have to look to work, to work to avoid that. But again, this is a guy who, when you're going and you're looking at undrafted players, you're looking strictly as potential, and I would not be surprised. I'm not saying he's ever going to be a starter or anything like that uh, in the NBA level, but I do think that he is definitely somebody that can carve out a role if he gets with the right development uh, coach that has the right mindset and gets stuff out of him. I definitely think that this is a guy that we can absolutely look at at some point being a nice role player in the NBA. I really, I, I, I like this guy's game. And I, and I think that, that AK and Eversley went out and got him and it was a calculated measure to get him. He's already signed now a two-way contract. So that means he is going to be down in the Windy City Bulls going down there doing some development. But as we've seen before, the Bulls are trying to start using the G League team as a true development factory. And if they and if they continue to do that and they have a vision for this guy, I can absolutely see him eventually working his way to maybe being a role player. Now, again, the height that he lacks is going to is going to possibly be a thing. He's going to have to add to his body and then you want to then you're going to worry about how much of his mobility and stuff is affected by that, but he's going to have to at least 
add some solid uh some solidness to that frame right especially that lower body if he can um he's not he's not great at running the floor or anything like that he's of course a below the rim athlete only a 31 inch max vertical which is completely different when you look at julian phillips having a 43 inch vertical uh that we drafted early in that second round but overall like I, I like this guy. I like the link that he provides. Again, not a huge shot blocker. He's not going to lead the league in blocks or anything, but he's smart enough where he's going to do that. Yeah, he averaged right under a block per game as a junior. We already talked about what he did as a senior. I think his feel for the game and how smart and how high that basketball IQ is for him as well, I think we can see him turn into a decent shot blocker if he learns how to use that link. Um, but at the end of the day, I think the Bulls got a nice potential as an undrafted rookie, and that's what you're looking at. We've seen undrafted rookies go through the G League and eventually come and be role players in the NBA. The biggest question now is, did the Bulls get one with Adama Sonogo? And if they did, how quickly is he going to be ready to produce for the Chicago Bulls? Let me know what you guys think on all that down below. Make sure you're following the show at Bulls Central Pod. You can send us any feedback, questions, comments, concerns, BullsCentralPod at gmail.com. Last, leave one, leave a text message and our voicemail for our mailbag episodes on the weekends, which means we're having one tomorrow. The number to do so, 773-270-2799. We are the number one spot for everything Chicago Bulls related because of you guys. And like I liked in every episode on. Go Bulls. Love you guys. See Red if you can, y'all. Peace. This has been a presentation of The Breaks, Breaks Media. Media. Media.